Welcome to e know how. In this video, we will look at how a PN diode operates. So before I go into the operation, I want to show you how a PN diode is usually constructed on an integrated circuit. On an integrated circuit, you usually start with a lightly doped P substrate, what I call P minus, and then we diffuse an N well in it. So N well, which is again N minus, a lightly doped N. It's a little bit more than the P minus. And now uh, you will have a diffusion of P plus in the in the N well. And then you'll also have a diffusion of N plus. This is to contact the N well. So now if you look at this, the diode is formed between these two points where this is the anode and this is the cathode. And the real diode operation usually it's happen here between the P plus and the N minus. This is the diode, the actual P N diode that we are looking at. And this, this N plus is usually only for contacting the N well and getting the anode cathode connection out. So this is the representation of the symbolic representation of the diode here. So where you have the anode and the cathode. Now to look at how the diode operates, so we look at just the P N junction. So let's draw the PN junction like this. And you have P type material on this side, N type material on this side, where you have an NA is the acceptor uh, concentration, impurity concentration on the P side per centimeter cube. That is the number of boron atoms per centimeter cube. And on this side, say we have ND, the donor. Uh, concentration on the N side. So the acceptors on the P side and donors on the N side. And now we know that there is an abundance of holes on the P side. So there is a lot of holes and we know that there is an abundance of electrons on the N side. Now what happens is once this junction is formed, the electrons would diffuse to the N side, these electrons would go and occupy the holes here. So this will go and occupy the holes here. Now what happens is on the P side, I'm just talking about the just the area where this happens. So on the P side you had uh, acceptor impurities which are boron atoms, so those were Na and now that each boron atom becomes a negatively charged ion because what happens is it gets an extra electron so it becomes Na minus. And whereas on the N side each phosphorus atom it loses its extra electron so it becomes a positively charged ion on the on this side. So you have Nd plus and Na minus here. And does this continue to happen all the way so that the whole P and the N uh, regions are consumed? No, it does not. It stops at a certain place. And why it stops is because now once you have ND plus exposed on this side and you have Na minus, there is an electric field that's built where you have a plus minus here. So there is an electric field that is built and this electric field will oppose the further movement of electrons from the N side to the P side. So now you have a negative, negatively charged, the potential is built across this. So that potential is called the built-in potential VBI. So it, it builds up a potential so that it stops the further movement of electrons from the N to the P side. So now this region where these charges got exposed, so now let me draw it again here. So there is this region on both the sides. So the charges got exposed, it's Na minus, Na minus, Na minus. And this side is Nd plus, Nd plus, so on this side. And if you notice, I, I drew these lengths different on both the sides. Now on the P side and the N side, so this is the junction here. This is the junction. So I drew 
WP, the depletion, what we call the, why it's called depletion is because there are no carriers, there are no electrons and holes, carriers in this. And see, the way I drew it is, I drew WN length to be greater than WP. There is a reason for this because what we said is we looked at a P plus N junction. So we have a P plus N junction. So the P side NA, NA is greater than ND. So we have larger doping on the P side. So now what happens is this WN and WP, the ratio will be such that the exposed charges are same on both the sides. So now assuming that the cross section of the diode, we have not taken the cross section area. So that let the cross section be, uh, you know, a constant and then we will have, so we have WP times NA is equal to WN times ND. So you will know that the lightly doped area would have a larger depletion uh, width within itself. So if you have NA, so is greater than ND here in this case, so WP will be less than WN. So that's how it, that's how it works out. So now the built-in potential, there is a vo voltage that is built in that opposes, that opposes further movement of electrons. So you have a VBI here built in such that it opposes further movement of electrons moving from the N to the P side uh, or the holes from the P to the N side. So that's how the diode, this is the static once you have without any application of any voltage, you will have a built-in potential in the diode. And now currents flow on the application of a voltage. So you take the P plus P and diode. Then we said without any voltage applied, you had a built-in, you had a depletion layer and we had a built-in potential of VBI with a plus on the N side and minus, minus on the P side. So let me correct this minus, so it's VBI minus on the P side. Now what we do is we forward bias the diode. So let's apply a voltage which is plus minus here. So we apply a voltage V. So now we know that till because of this VBI built in potential here, as long as V is less than VBI, ID is zero. There is no current. ID is zero. It slowly starts increasing, but it's very, very negligible. So now uh, also we know that we have an abundance of holes here and we have an abundance of electrons here. So on this side. So now what happens is if you keep increasing the voltage V, V is greater than VBI, it will overcome the barrier potential. And now the what happens is you have holes moving from the P side to the N side, the holes will move from P side to N side and start diffusing in there into the N side. So the holes are moving this way. Now if you look at the electrons, the electrons from the N side move into the P side and they start diffusing here. So this is electrons moving this way. So now once you have the holes moving this way, to compensate for that, what happens is you will have electrons moving this way and consuming the holes. So there is a current that is started there. There is a forward bias current that, that is started. So once uh, then the holes, this side, you have the electrons moving out back into the supply here. The electrons are moving this way back. So that is how the forward bias diode operates. And now in the forward bias diode, the, the current is due to the majority carriers. Why majority carriers? Because we have holes from the P side moving into the N side, the holes from the P side moving into the N side, and the electrons from the N side moving into the P side. So that's why it's the majority carriers. Now, and these currents, usually if you plot this current with respect to voltage, so you have the voltage applied here, and the current here 
initially till the voltage reaches VBI there is very very negligible current and then it starts taking off kind of exponentially here. So the diode current looks like this in the forward bias. Now in the reverse bias junction, so now if you look at the reverse bias junction, so you have P and N and then what we do is we have the depletion rate that was built in and you put minus and plus V here. Now this is and you have plus minus on this VBI. So this the voltage that we apply here is adds to the VBI and so what happens is in this case the depletion widths keep moving they extend more and more the depletion width will start ex extending more and more into the N region and the same way the depletion width will start extending more and more into the P region. So there is no majority carrier movement here but still you know that even on the N side we know that there is a little bit of uh, holes in the N side though they are very very little and same thing on the P side you have a little bit of electrons here the concentration of electrons on the P side. Now for these holes from the N side and the electrons from the P side for them you have a potential for movement because the electrons can move towards the positive side. So from the P side the electrons can move this way and from the N side the holes can move this way. But this is very very little current. So that's what happens when you when you look at the reverse bias. So when you have this is the reverse bias. So we have V uh, this is the VR so this is 0 so we say it is a negative voltage because we always look at the voltage between the P and N we also look for the current in the same direction now the current is in the opposite direction so there will be a very little current here and what happens is after a certain point the current kind of takes off in the diode that's because of what we call avalanche breakdown so now once the current increases, uh, keeps increasing, the voltage increases, so more and more uh, minority carriers move and they dislodge, they actually dislodge more and more carriers from the bonds and then there is an avalanche and so you have an avalanche breakdown. But in some diodes and what we call usually Zener diodes, so in Zener diodes usually what they do is they make sure that the doping is such that you have a large electric field created for a smaller voltage large electric field for an applied VR or reverse bias voltage. In that case the current looks like this too in the reverse bias but after a certain point there will be a sudden increase of current and it is usually sharp. You don't have this knee here there is a knee for the avalanche breakdown. And now here for the Zener breakdown it's kind of sharp. So the current increases very quickly and that is they make the diode such that you have the diffusions usually you have P plus N plus diodes which have Zener breakdown and then this is very very well defined voltage so you can use it like a voltage reference so this is the V Zener uh, breakdown voltage can be used as a reference voltage. So this is the operation of diode in forward and reverse biases.